All right, folks, Jeff from Dead Drift Consulting here again. Uh, the, the last video that I did regarding <clears throat> the Easton Pro Comp aero shaft build was, uh, went pretty well. Um, I don't know what the view count is to this point. Quite honestly, that's not very important, but I do know that it is making a difference and it is bringing some information to people that take the time to, to, uh, to look at them. So, um, just following up a little bit on that one, is was a suggestion regarding the the fletching configuration how many veins what length how many of them uh, and then the different configurations of how those are actually glued onto the shaft this topic is well covered um, so I'm not going to try to really educate anybody I guess in this because I think that's beating a dead horse and it's a little bit presumptuous of me to think that I can bring some new piece of information to any of you out there who are already shooting and and building arrows. Um, plenty of info out there regarding straight offset helical, how many, like the reasons, whatever. I, this whole video here is at the suggestion of, a, of one of the guys that commented on the video. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> Uh, and, and he just wanted to know like what was my thought process and what how what was the road what was the pathway that brought me to what I've settled on right now um, and so I'm, I'm so I'm gonna do that so to begin with let me just say this the very first bow I ever bought and when I started shooting bows uh, was back in the I can't nail it down to a year well I could but I'm just not too not bright enough to do the math at the moment but I think I was 16 or 17 years old so that puts me at about mm, early 80s <laughs> uh, yeah early 80s so I bought my very first bow back then it was a PSE Jet Flight Express because it was awesome and it looked badass and of course it was a PSE which means everything at least back then was about speed right this was the era of of overdraws on 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 uh, bow risers on the on the arrow shelf, and just pushing the lightest arrow the fastest you could get without any regard for any other factor that actually matters. I'm at a point now where I've pretty much completely not completely, I've significantly altered my priority list uh, when it comes to building arrows. So back then, I don't remember what the arrows were that I was shooting. I do, however, remember. Everything was aluminum. They were all made by Easton, almost. Uh, and there were some really great patterns out there with camouflage, anodizing, and one of my favorites is still, to this day, the XX75 shafts in like that burnt orange finish, which I just thought was gorgeous. I still think it's gorgeous. Uh, and quite honestly, if they came out with a shaft, which I'm sure they could do, if they came out with a shaft in that color that was that hit the marks that I wanted it to hit with regards to performance. Uh, I would probably buy a pair, a set of those, uh, a dozen or two, just to build them from from a nostalgic point of view because I really dig that color. Anyway, you know that was when it was like large diameter thin walled shafts, right? So it was super light, but the larger diameter gave it the stiffness, to, the the ability to reach certain spines, and 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 get everything to tune out properly. Well. Then I went a number of years without really touching the bow, um, just because of life changes, uh, different careers, relationships, having children, all these little things, you know, that conspire to eat away the, our, our time, preaching to the choir, right? Because it happens now, it happens today. <clears throat> However, um, fast forward to 2006, I was in Iraq, I was uh, contracting for the Department of State in Basra, and I was bored out of my frickin' skull, so I ordered a bow online, I ordered a dozen arrows online, I had them shipped to a guy, an archery guy, or an arrow builder that custom crested everything, because at the time I had the money to spend, and it was, it was pretty cool to be able to order this stuff to occupy my mind and then have it shipped to me. The entire thing was shipped to me in Iraq, if you can believe it or not. Uh, a complete bow, all, all set up, uh, a Bowtech Allegiance, in a hard case, with a giant bag target, and then a dozen arrows from this other, 
this other archery shop. Um, and then I shot there in Basra for three months and then rotated home for a month and then shot for another three months and kept doing that for about a year and a half. Excuse me. So that recipe then was still kind of speed oriented, um, less about uh, um, momentum, kinetic energy, maximum penetration, all those things that, that today are very important to me weren't so important back then. It was, um, it was more just a process of getting something that I thought was pleasing to the eye, shot well, and um, were from companies that made, at the time, what I perceived as superior products. This company that I'm about to show you from this arrow still builds a very good, a very good arrow shaft actually right here in Tempe, Arizona. So this is from 2006. This is the Carbon Tech Rhino shaft, <clears throat> which is a little thicker wall, a little bit heavier shaft than some of their other stuff that they made. I think they had, they named them all after animals, and I think like a cheetah or something like that was like a thin walled, fast, lightweight shaft. This is a little bit heavier, um, but very durable, high quality shaft. And uh, quite honestly, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't turn these down uh, even today. But you can see the cresting on there, I think. The guy, it's hand crested. This is paint. This isn't just a, a, a vinyl wrap. But he did this specifically for me, and he used these colors on these veins um, because I was looking for something that kind of uh, mirrored the profession I was in and was kind of along those sort of military-ish theme um, so he put some green in there and tans and some browns, um, a little yellow for, for visibility for that cock vein. Um, but obviously three fletch blazer veins and blazers are, remember, two inches long, about a half inch high. Um, <clears throat> crested very nicely, typical old school style sort of bony knock, large knock on there. And this is a pretty heavy diameter arrow. It gets, it gets big around, uh, I don't know what I don't know what it actually mics out to, um, but I can tell you here right now. Let me zero this out. So in terms of millimeters, this shaft is almost eight millimeters, seven point seven five. So that's a pretty big ass shaft <laughs> uh, relative to what I'm shooting today. That's almost almost twice as big um, anyhow they flew very well and I was very happy with these arrows I wasn't paying attention to things like what did it sound like in flight how noisy is this thing um, how well does it fly at greater distances I think probably the, the furthest I shot while I was there was somewhere in the 40 50 yard range I'd be surprised if it was 50 so it was probably closer to 30 or 40 yards uh, so then after I rotated home I started shooting some other some other stuff and there was a period of about 10 years prior to this when I was I couldn't tell you what I was shooting um, I was bow hunting every winter or every fall and winter in in the Midwest and I don't remember honestly what the hell I was shooting shooting back then um, and that was from about 95 through yeah, 2005, 2000, well, 2005. Um, <clears throat> so, anyway, this is the this is the furthest back one that I can I can pull out of the inventory that I still have and remember. The uh, Carbon Tech, uh, the the Rhino, Carbon Tech Rhino. So then I started experimenting with some other stuff. This is an Axis with uh, AAE Max um, veins. Now these are shit. What are these things? Um, they gotta be, whoops. Uh, these are gonna be about two and a half, hmm, 2.8 inches long. So these are 2.8 inches long, probably a good half inch high. Uh, again, in a three fletch on an eastern axis. Now I'm moving up in weight and durability when it comes to the actual shaft material. <coughs> um, these shot very well for me. 
I had no no issue with these either. However, maybe it's me. I don't know. Um, these veins are a little bit. Well, first of all, they're heavy for what I consider heavy um, per vein, and then they're also a little bit noisy. So I wasn't overly thrilled with that. Um, then I started getting into this uh, Easton ACC arrow. Now I was intrigued by this because you know this has got their aluminum core with a carbon a carbon outer <clears throat> um, very high tolerances or tight tolerances on these these are a little bit more you're gonna pay you paid more for these back in the day when they were available and they were uh, they were kind of on the um, I hate to use the word exclusive but you're not gonna find these at Cabela's right this is something that you had to order or specifically request. At any rate, the Easton ACC, well, uh, I, I started using Flex Fletch veins. And quite honestly, with only one exception, I haven't looked back. Flex Fletch veins have been just phenomenal for me in terms of performance, weight, ease of, of use. The only downside to them um, initially was they seemed to be difficult to get to adhere to the shaft. Uh, and that had something to do with manufacturing. There was a workaround for it, you know, using acetone on the bases and cleaning them and even washing them in hot soap and water first and all these different little hacks to kind of get past that point. Well, they fixed it now. All the current flex fletch veins that I've used, I have zero issues with them sticking and, and no application problems. And I really like the material that they use. Uh, it's durable, it's flexible, it's got great memory and it's these are very lightweight well these are FFP 360s I believe so the 360s is the length 3.6 inches long and it is about I don't know what the height is on these I want to say it's in that close to half yeah so they're a half inch high and 3.6 inches long that's a big vein for a for a compound right um, four and five inch veins on well feathers on traditional archery equipment is pretty common um, but I, I just these seem to work really well and they these will always work well for me so this is like my go-to vein for something I can't get to fly let's say I am completely sold and addicted on a specific broadhead that just planes like hell and it just wants to steer it steer the arrow everywhere it, it everywhere it wants you know regardless of what I want this vein is going to tame that um, in my experience this is the only vein that tamed a three blade VPA solid which has a ton of surface area um, good head if you can get them to fly I couldn't um, these helped didn't cure the entire problem but I would imagine I, I tend to believe that there, there were more forces at work than just that broad head getting those to fly but anyway um, the Flex Fletch FFP 360 is an outstanding plastic vein. Um, it will correct just about everything. I'm still in the three Fletch mode, right? <clears throat> um, I hunted these here, my first season hunting here. This is this is the this is the arrow I shot. Uh, moving on. <clears throat> the next build, I started getting into higher FOC. I wanted higher FOC. I wanted a heavier arrow. My benchmark was 500 grains. I wanted it to be a hard hitting, wind defeating, slow <laughs> uh, arrow <clears throat> that had high FOC and was super accurate, uh, forgiving and accurate. And what I came up with was the Black Eagle Deep Impact Shaft. It's a micro diameter shaft, 0.166 interior di diameter required an outsert because there was no system excuse me there was no real system to replicate at the time like the Valkyrie center pin which gives you all that strength uh, but the deep impact is like 10.2 grains per inch I can't read it I don't know if it's maybe it is I don't know if it's on here or not but <clears throat> 
10 point something grains per inch right on the on the the the, the deep impact <clears throat> I fletched it with feathers now these are three inch four fletch so now I'm moving shorter in vein length after finding that the blazer veins were too short and too noisy um, I'm moving a little shorter drop six tenths of an inch off of each vein but I also added a vein so I actually have more surface area and the feathers the property of feathers you get a ton of surface area regardless because of the way a feather I mean the way it, it is it's not just a sheet of plastic it's like a bunch of micro terrain all the way down that vein um, that wants to grab the wind create drag and stabilize <clears throat> uh, what are the advantages of feathers? Well, they're super, super freaking light. So if you're going for ultimate FOC and you, you, what you want to do is reduce as much as you can the amount of weight on the ass end of the arrow because back here, that destroys your FOC up here. And adding weight to the rear has a greater effect on that FOC number than adding weight to the front. It takes more weight at the front to counteract weight at the rear than it does vice versa. I hope that makes sense. Uh, so I went to the four fletch because I wanted it to try it seemed like it was a trendy thing and it was uh, I wanted to know for myself whether or not this actually worked and Well suffice to say I haven't looked back. I'm, I'm fletching everything in a four fletch now Regardless of what vein I use unless I were to go back to that FFP 360 I would still fletch that three just because it's so huge um, but <clears throat> The four fletch feathers worked very well for me super quieted flight great uh, great effect on FOC lots of drag and, and surface area to bite the wind and kind of correct and, and, and steer that point um, the only downside is their fragility so if you run into some brush like we do here in Arizona these get torn up pretty quick excuse me I'm not picking my nose I just have something tickle in my face uh, so moving through the brush uh, the oak brush the, the manzanita all the other crap that's out here that requires some forethought as to how you're going to carry your bow in order to to protect the the feathers and then secondly of course the the always present problem is wet weather and what happens to these things when they get wet well they, they want to lay down I tried a number of different treatments on them to to prevent that or to try to ward it off a little bit um, What's that shit called? Scotch Guard spraying it on there. I tried the powder stuff. Uh, ultimately, what I wound up with this was this paint on uh, liquid, whatever, water repellent. It seemed to work fairly well. I didn't have a whole lot of problems, but I also wasn't like hunting Alaska either. Okay, I was hunting here in Arizona in November. So, <clears throat> but I was I was happy with these, and uh, I'm not going to go back to them only because of the durability issue, uh, but. It was a fun experiment and they were fun to shoot and I, I kind of enjoyed the whole feather traditional sort of a vibe to it okay so so now we've moved into the the feathers stuff um, the next thing I tried was again something from flex fletch veins and it was their silent night series so this is the SK 200 they make it in a three inch also the SK 300 um, the, the the description of these on their website is very you know a, a stiffer material than the regular vein which stands up better at higher speeds doesn't flap around a lot so you don't get a lot of that wind noise at higher speeds um, and I guess the shape is supposed to help with silent flight I don't know uh, again my okay so <laughs> This is on the deep impact shaft again. There's only three of them on here because one's ripped off and I don't have another one. Uh, but this was four fletched again. Um, no offense to Flex Fletch products because I'm a loyal customer and I continue to use their stuff. But this particular vein, the Flex, the, the, the Silent Knight 200 and 300 are anything but silent in my experience. These things are as noisy as blazers are, if not more so and I don't know why that is I'm not shooting a super fast bow right my bow right now with the arrow configuration I have is at about 275 give or take two feet per second okay um, 
so I'm not shooting very fast. Uh, and I just tried these again just to make sure that I wasn't losing my mind. Um, I tried these again with these current Pro Comp shafts and I found the same thing now as I did then. The Flex, the, the SK200s and 300s are noisy veins. And for me, that's a non-starter. Like, I won't, I'm not going to use them just for that reason alone. Uh, I, I do firmly believe in the fact that animals, of course they hear the bow firing, but they also hear this damn thing coming through the air and coming towards them. Because everything they do, all of their senses are geared and have evolved to do very few things well. Survival is amongst the highest of them. Uh, so they are tuned in to hearing an object coming through the air towards them. They know that shit's happening. <clears throat> Can't eliminate uh, flight noise entirely, but anything we can do to reduce that is going to help and uh, make us more successful. So I've abandoned the Silent Night series because they're too damn noisy. <clears throat> Alright, so that brings us up to last year. Or no, I'm sorry, this year. This current year now. So the current year now, um, I have skipped I've skipped a, a shaft in here because I went from the, the deep impacts from Black Eagle to the X impact shaft, which is a lighter weight, a lighter grain per inch uh, arrow shaft. Um, but I fletched the X impacts the same way that I did the Day 6 HDs and now the Pro Comps. And that is with the FFP 300 vein from Flex Fletch. The FFP 300 is a 3 inch, three inch long vein. It is just over four tenths of an inch. I think it's 0 .409 uh, inches high in height, so it's less than a half inch. It's a little lower profile parabolic cut right there. Um, and this vein seems to be my sweet spot. I have tried this exact same vein in the two and a half inch version, and it doesn't. It doesn't. I don't get enough control out of it when shooting a broadhead like. A Valkyrie Jagger 200. Uh, I think it needs more surface area than what the 250s uh, offer. This is the limit for me. Uh, I get good arrow flight with broadheads with this vein out to I don't know 70 yards, 80 maybe. Um, I, I hesitate to say 80 because I haven't shot 80 enough with broadheads and these veins yet to really give you give a definitive answer on that and I don't want to mislead anybody but <clears throat> 60 70 yards these things are flying great with those broadheads which again it, it you may be familiar it's a big broadhead it's a uh, what two and three quarter inches long it's a one inch cutting diameter three blade there's quite a bit of surface area uh, for for outside forces to act on that broadhead and steer your arrow these seem to do a very good job at controlling that. Again, I'm sticking with the four fletch. I fletch them right hand helical. As much helical as I can get on a Bitsenberger jig and these smaller diameter shafts. Like these, these micro or nano diameter shafts. Um, with a larger diameter shaft, you can get away with more helical because there's the, 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 the curvature of that shaft isn't as, as great, right? I mean, I think this makes sense. Um, if I dial in too much helical on my jig and stick in one of these four or five millimeter shafts, I start getting, I, I don't get good contact of the vein base with the shaft so that the glue sticks. Uh, so as much helical as I can get away with, uh, right hand, <clears throat> and I've just been super happy with this configuration. These things have been flying fantastic. This is the day six shaft. Uh, this is a heavy shaft, like I mentioned before, 11.7, uh, two, 11.2 grains per inch on a 300 spine shaft. It's pretty dang heavy. Uh, about the only, the heavier one in a 300 is gonna be like a full metal jacket, which I think is over 12. But <clears throat> um, I started using wraps because I found that Number one, the wraps increase visibility of the arrow. Number two, they allow the glue to stick better when I'm, 
I get better adhesion of these veins on on the wrap rather than straight onto the carbon shaft. Um, and then again, like I mentioned in the last video, I'm using these Easton Deep Six Knocks, which I are just freaking fantastic. Um, very stiff knocks, very short distance between the throat of the knock and where the shaft starts. Uh, so that makes that creates a very efficient transfer of energy from the string to the to the shaft. <clears throat> And then finally, the current build, which I went over in the last video, and that is the Easton Procon. Um, same veins, Flex Fletch FFP 300s, 3 inches long, 4 tenths of an inch high, in a 4 fletch right hand helical. <clears throat> um, again, with this, with this wrap, which by the way are made by One Stringer, OneStringer.com, it's O N E S T R I N G E R, OneStringer.com. Um, they're out of Missouri. I've been using these wrap their their wraps for uh, a couple of years now, and I've been super happy. I've probably flexed fletched uh, six or eight dozen arrows using using his wraps, and they're just absolutely fantastic. Like they're super thin vinyl that weighs nothing. They're they're cut precisely. You order the right width of the strip to match the diameter of your arrow, and I just roll them on on a foam pad. And I'll tell you what, man, they've just, everything lines up great. I, I don't have any problem. They're, they're durable. Now, when I strip off, they're thin. So when I strip off the veins in order to, say, fix one or refletch something or whatever, nine out of ten times I'm taking that section of the, of the wrap off of the arrow because it's just peeling up. Um, the glue on, on the vein is overcoming the glue of the wrap. Right, <clears throat> so I'm peeling that up and whatever. If it's a test arrow, then it's really not that big of a deal because uh, it does, doesn't need to be pretty, right? But when I finally get to that final recipe, then I, everything is fresh, everything gets cleaned up, and everything is freshly applied. Um, and then I and then I, I have my final my final product. But four flex on uh, four fletch on this also, like I mentioned. Uh, the 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 east the pro comp 300 shaft is nine and a half grains per inch, which strikes that perfect balance for me. Um, once again, I probably mentioned in the in the first or the, the last video, the most recent one before this one, aluminum core and carbon outer. It is a true four millimeter shaft, 166 inside diameter, um, and these things have been flying great. I was just out at. The Usury Pass Range out here in the East Valley area of in the Phoenix Valley, uh, shooting the known distance range because I was trying to get my pin set after having done some work on the bow and done some changes with the arrows. Uh, and these things, I was literally shooting paper plate less than paper plate size groups at 90 yards. Things kind of fell apart a little bit at 100 because I was fatigued and I could feel it in my my left shoulder. My left shoulder is the one that was partially uh, replaced three years ago so that takes its toll after shooting you know for three hours straight but all the way out to 80 90 yards man these things were just unbelievably consistent grouping very well shooting straight I'm watching the arc of the arrow it's just a gorgeous sight so there's the proof in the pudding there's the validation for all the hard work and the time and the money I have spent to arrive at this recipe uh, and which, by the way, I mean the day shift, day six shaft, these things flew equally well. I just don't think they're going to group as well at that distance because I'm just bleeding off so much velocity. But 275 ish on the chronograph. All right. So I hope that answers some questions for you. Uh, if you have any more or whatever else, please feel free to leave a comment and ask those questions in those comments. Um, this video right here is proof that I, I will answer them. Most of the time, I'm not going to make a promise because I know I screwed over somebody that asked about the uh, Kefaro Super Tarp, and to you, I'm sorry if you're watching. But <clears throat> at any rate, deaddriftconsulting.com is the website. Uh, at deaddriftconsulting underscore LLC is my Instagram page. And then Jeff at deaddriftconsulting.com is the email. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.